Alright, hello guys, girls, parents, and pets. Let's get into my review. Excuse me, of 070 Shake's latest album. Oh yeah. What is it called? Modus Vivendi. A little bit, uh, crazy name. The album is in a different order on Genius than it is on Spotify. So I'm going to be doing the order in which they appear on Spotify. This is a bit of a warning. It starts out on a beautiful intro with her vocalising about what happens to be a love-hate relationship. Uh, Next track, Come Around, is a similar track with her vocalising beautifully and she's being quite vulnerable here. Asking someone to come over right now because she needs them. At the end of the track, there's about a 30 seconds worth of distorted synth. That sounds really good. But it would have breaks in it. Like it would pause for a second or two. And that was fairly off-putting, especially since it was like at the end of the song. You think it's the end of the song every time it does it. Yeah. Um, Morrow comes or continues on with the love-hate relationship theme. Obviously short for... Tomorrow, uh, the verses are filled with contradictions, but it seems like she's leaning a bit more on the nah side. And the chorus basically says she doesn't know if she'll be around tomorrow or not. The Pines is up next, and apparently that's been a song since 1870. <laughs> the Pines. Yeah, I've never heard of it before, but like Nirvana's done a cover, and people just keep on doing covers and like bringing it back. There you go. So. For the 2020s, it's 070 Shake that's bringing it back. Um, I actually really liked it. It's a fairly low-key melody from her part, and the beat is fairly simple until you get to about the two-and-a-half-minute mark. Because until then, or at that point, there's like a huge like orchestra of like strings and shit. It's, it's very intense. It sounds really good. Guilty Conscious is up next, and we did a track review of that bad boy two weeks ago now. Mm -hmm. Uh, She has said that the premise of this track is about how men aren't allowed to display sadness. They have to form a shell at a young age, and if anything were to break the shell, he has to replace the shell with actions. I do really like that, and it's a great song. Um, It's about walking in on someone cheating on you. And experiencing that heartbreak, but also feeling relieved because they're clearing the guilty conscience after you've done the exact same thing to them. Divorce is up next. It's got some pretty fancy electric guitar. Uh, Someone in the comments on Genius said that it's an experience, and I would definitely have to agree with that. Uh, It's obviously about breaking up with someone. I don't know if it's an actual divorce or not, but she ends the verse on such a good note. Uh, Me and you, we were one... That was once, but now we're two. Played along, all along. We both did things when you were wrong. I like that. And the outro of the song is like a minute and a half just of the beat. Like electric guitars, jungle vibe drums, and like a a pad sort of flowing throughout the beat. Then at about halfway, it does a little switcheroo on you to like a, a phasing pad with some very saddening piano chords. And like old mate said... It really is an experience. Uh, to do it justice, put on some headphones, turn it up, and close your eyes. It's a really, really cool listen. Uh, it's Forever is a very small 17-second long interlude. <clears throat> it samples a song from The Ebony's with the same name. Uh, but it says, Forever, that's how long I'll love you. So to me, it's seeming like this love-hate relationship that's sort of constantly swinging between the two is swinging like more and more violently now. Rocket ship continues to carry on this theme. Uh, To her, the relationship feels like a rocket ship. It's a lot of fun. She says that no one is going to be stopping this rocket ship anytime soon. But she also has lyrics like, I can't be here for fun. Yeah, you see what that does. Mm. So she's like doubting the relationship. Then in the outro, she says, can't find the one. I guess I'm better off. So, like, something like, you know, something is better than nothing kind of thing. Uh, And then, also in the outro, she says, 
right now the moon feels lighter than the sun. And I sort of interpret that as the nights are easier than the days, which I think is a really cool way of saying that. Uh, there's an instrumental for like the last sort of 30 seconds or so of that track as well. It sounds very Kanye. Uh, microdosing is about giving a person your all and someone giving you their all. She says it's a bad idea because it's the easiest way to lose yourself. And it sounds like she's coming from a previous relationship with some hurt. Um, <clears throat> the thing that confirms the suspicion for me is how she ends verse one. I don't want to be your everything because I don't want to leave you with nothing. So it sounds like she doesn't have much faith in herself to give the significant other what she believes they deserve. Mm. Uh, on the outro, she also repeats that phrase a couple of times with like a high-pitched synth just going crazy in the background. It sounds like something out of like an old video game or something. I, that song I really do like. Uh, super catchy chorus as well on that one. Nice to Have is next, and it's about being in a not necessarily abusive relationship, but just not a good one. Uh, she knows that by, say, by staying, she's just going to get hurt, but she says she doesn't give a fuck. She wants it. She says, sometimes I want to feel the pain, ah, uh, so squeeze my heart all day, squeeze it till it breaks, or squeeze it till it breaks in. Fuck what they say, I'm safe in your arms. Mm. Under the Moon has a very boom bap type feel to it. It actually surprised me. Then as the chorus ramps up, it turns like an alternative R&B. She's a very talented singer with a lot of dynamic range. She can sing with like a similar cadence to Selena Gomez, but then she can also deepen her voice and hit like a lot of lower notes with ease. Oh, I really like it when she does that. On Daydreaming, uh, she's switched up the style on us again. Uh, for the verses of the songs, the beat is just an 808 going nuts with a very quiet vocal sample in the background. But then when the chorus comes in, all these synths and strings rise up and she, of course, matches that in her voice. Uh, the second last song is called Terminal B. It's a very intense track. It's about uh, wanting to leave someone, but what if she's the best out there? Uh, what if she's a lockdown lover, she says. One line that hits really hard is, and then I start to wonder, why can't I feel this with another? Which is really hard, and it it sounds like at one point she's even considering an open relationship if it means she gets to stay around this person. Uh, maybe she just want to be free for the night, but don't you fall in love with my baby. And finally, Flight 319. It's very synth heavy. Uh, before she and the drums come in, it sounds like um, like the DreamWorks intro. Mm. And yeah, it's really cool. Um, it, it's, the song's a little bit cryptic, and she even says that in the song. They don't get the context because it's too complex. But I think basically what she's saying is, I don't know. I don't know what I'm supposed to do. I don't know what I'm going to do. I don't know where I'm going. Um, she does have a cool line in the first verse as well. Lost her only son and he wasn't even three. Now try telling her that everything is meant to be. It's hard to believe a vision you can't see. But tell me, have you looked at the air that you breathe? It's like, obviously, you can't see that, but it is real. So, the visions that you can't see, you know, there's a good chance of them being real. I do really like that. It's a very artistic album. Uh, very... Genius labels it as pop, but I wouldn't say so at all. It's kind sort of a of mix like of indie. genres. Yeah, indie R&B. Yeah. Yeah, I think that's the best way to say it. Um, but yeah, it is really nice. Um... She said before it's an album that you have to give all of your focus to, and I definitely do agree with that. Uh, I don't think I'll return just because it's not really my kind of music, but I do still really like it. I'm glad I listened to it. Uh, but my main qualm with it is that there isn't a lot of variety. For the most songs, or for the most part, the songs do found, sound fairly similar. So it's getting a 6 out of 10 for me. There so, you go. Shout out 070 Shake. I'm going to keep my eye on her. I do like the noises that she makes. Yep. And I hope that yeah, she can improve over time. There you go. So thank you guys for watching. Uh, be sure to tune in tomorrow. No, I don't know. Tomorrow for one of our videos. Tune in tomorrow for the shoes. The shoes? Yes. Yep. The shoes. <laughs> All right. <laughs> That's a wrap.